this is going to be the um, first of these videos and uh, we've been trying to figure out you know how to share and uh, in the praise reports of what's happening with the prison ministry um, we have uh, a few people that every single month uh, they help support this ministry because it's not free you know to to be able to get on the tablets in prisons across the country uh, there's two, Edovo and Pando, that charge uh, monthly um, for allowing us to upload our sermons, our Bible studies, and our podcast. And uh, as, as of the time of this writing, we have over a million views in less than three months. We have over 4,100 salvations uh, in less than three months. And, uh, and we only have, I believe, 28 videos up at, at the time of this, this video. And um, Sharon had the idea of, because a lot of times we sit here in the lobby and we read uh, the prison letters. Every single day we have sometimes two letters, sometimes 15 letters every single day. And um, I thought it'd be... I agreed with her. It'd be a good idea to just share because I know, first of all, if you're a monthly supporter of this ministry, I'm sure you would love to hear these letters, but I'm sure there's many, many of you that are supporting in your prayers and you would love to hear some of these letters. Um, so I'm going to be doing this every single week. I'll, I'll use first name basis because I don't want to ever over, overstep my boundaries with the, the people that are writing and by saying their full name, because what if they don't want me to, but I will say their first name. I think that's the best way to do it. And I have a, a handful of letters here, and um, and I just want to go ahead and share with you. If you want to help be a part of this ministry, by all means, please um, let me know immediately. Uh, you could uh, email us at houseofrestchurch at gmail dot com. I'll put it in the description box. I'll put it on the uh, on the comments uh, because this is uh, like this is what I've told people. I've told many people this. I said, do you realize that? By helping us do this, you are, we, are, we are together, collectively, reaching people that would otherwise be impossible to reach. Yeah, you know, so behind us, and just another thing, um, behind us, we actually have this board that Abraham made, and um, it says uh, Christ Unbarred. Christ Unbarred is our ministry name for those that are incarcerated, and they are sending photos, they're sending drawings, they're sending poems, along with their letters. So we decided because we want them to feel included as part of this church family. And also we want the church family here to feel a connection with them. So we're going to constantly be putting up things. And when it fills up, then we'll put new ones and trade them out. And uh, so we, as you can see, like right here, there's a beautiful drawing all in pen. Uh, we have photos right above my head. Uh, we have some, was it, are those poems in the middle? Yes. Yeah, poems in the middle and different things. So we're hoping... Yes, so these are things to help bridge the gap between the church family because basically um, we have our church family here. We have 196 chairs. Uh, we have our RBT and YouTube family, which is probably roughly about 500 of you that are consistent watchers. And then we have those that are watching us through Pando and Edovo, which is in the thousands. I, I believe uh, we have 22,000 subscribers on Pando. Um, Edovo uh, is the other app. They don't give us those those uh, algorithm those those statistics or an analytics, uh, so we're not sure, you know. But nevertheless, I'm going to go ahead and and read. Yeah. So in case you're wondering who I'm talking to over there, it's Sharon. And uh, I do want to start off by saying this: today we had our first experience of actually visiting visiting one of our viewers in person. Uh, his mother reached out to us and um, he happened to be in the county jail here uh, near Stockton. And uh, I wasn't sure. Uh, I had been incarcerated there twice myself, so I, I was a little uneasy um, going in there and walking into those doors. Uh, I remember walking in that lobby I walked into and that's where I released out of. I remember walking out in, at midnight out of those same doors that we walked in through. And, uh, but uh, we were able to get in, you know, and I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure because of my past, I wasn't sure. Um, and uh, it was, it was, it was those people waiting to visit and, um, and we gave the name of who we we're gonna visit. And I said, I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but this is a, a clergy visit. 
because I'm and she goes you're a pastor I said yes we pastor a church she goes do you have your clergy card I said yeah of course I do you know because we're under Grace International and showed it to them and uh, they read it and, and looked at it and said you know what go right in didn't have to wait or anything and that was a blessing so we got to meet um, uh, the brother and uh, man, he was all smiles uh, he couldn't believe that we went to visit him he uh, you know and his family is far away <clears throat> you know at least a couple hours away so I doubt he ever gets pulled out for visits much often and um, and we were able to fellowship with him pray with him and and just be an encouragement you know and um, and he let us know that that a lot of people are watching uh, our podcast and man that's that's encouraging to us but this is our first you know so anyways um i'm gonna read this first letter from his name is john uh out of what i'll say is her name and what state we'll keep it like that huh this is john from texas and um and he wrote this and um i, I chose this one to read because i wrote a little note on it because i want you to know that a lot of times uh, many of you feel lonely in your walk you feel lonely and, and he um clearly um you know feels lonely also you know and and it just kind of to share kind of maybe to take you into their place of where they're at and what it is that they do sometimes i'm not going to read the whole thing uh because like right here there's a whole paragraph where he talks about some of the skills that he knows in his work and stuff and you know i, I just want to get to the meat of this but anyways you want me to read it all okay so he says, Hello, church. Uh, dear Pastor David and Sister Sharon, greetings in the precious name of Jesus. I had no intentions of writing a church or falling in love with the family, especially as I have no blood family left alive. I found you through the Pando app on my tablet when I saw Real Vida at your church and studio. They have been to my prison unit a few times. Real Vida, we've had them here, uh, Jeremy and, and Sister Eve. Anyways, it says, uh, I pray that I get this letter wrote before being called upon again as I work in maintenance on the Allred unit doing heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration uh, HVAC. I work 80 hours per week, plus nights, weekends, and holiday call out 24-7. I'm also certified in plumbing and electrical, plus EPA certified to handle refrigerant. I am lead tech in, I'm not sure what that says, and I work only for God. I've been meaning to write for weeks now, but haven't had the opportunity or the courage. I heard Sharon say that she had guarded her heart, and I felt her brokenness, because I too have guarded my heart for many years. I've been locked up 24 years for a crime God knows I never committed. After watching your messages over and over, I have realized that being introduced to you, that this is a God thing, and that you are real. But you have to understand that through life's up and downs, Ups and downs, I have built a wall around my heart. Yes, I'm a Christian, but in prison, it's been no easy walk, which will become a part of my testimony later on. My thing is right now to reach out to try to belong to a family that I've never really had. I would like to feel like people out there care. I need to feel like my life is worth something by making others smile, feel loved, to take part and make a whole and make, make me whole through Jesus being the center. I wrote many feelings down over the years. Here's one of them. Your dreams only need the support of one person yourself. No matter how bad, how tough, or how ugly your cocoon may be, never give up. Uh, hit life with everything you have because the very next swing could be the one that frees the butterfly. My, I do pray that you will accept me into your church family. Or at the very least, be my friend. Because as God is my witness, it will not be in vain. Pastor David, Sister Sharon, I love the two of you unconditionally. You both bring a message that, I'm, that not only people need to hear, but the true word from Jesus. My name is John. And he gives his address, you know. And, um, you know, this is... The, he has no family left. You know, and, and guys, letter after letter after letter, so many people have said, I finally found a church that I can call my family. You know, and I mean, this is this is what it's about. You know, and, and he just wants a church family. You know, and, and the, you know, I was talking today to um, 
our friend Julio in Texas, who is a chaplain and he's a director at a, at a men's, like a men's home, right? And he, he says something very important to me today because he runs a men's home and he says, you know, a lot of times I'll get seven out of how many, what do you say? 30? 30. Seven out of 30 that are really serious for the Lord. And then he says, but here's the thing. Out of those seven, usually sometimes they're the worst ones. They're the worst ones that give me the hardest problems the first month. And they're, those, those are the ones that end up just completely, you know, giving their life to the Lord completely and surrendering. But they go through that moment. He goes, had I kicked them out early? And then he goes, they come back and later on and they say, thank you, because I know I messed up here a lot. You could have kicked me out a bunch of times, but you didn't. You know, and so a lot of people make mistakes, some of us worse than others. And it's the same thing with these guys in prison. There's a lot of people out right now that have done things that probably would have landed them in prison, but they never got caught. You know, so the difference is they got caught, you know, but nevertheless, everybody, you know, we get chances to to reconcile, to reconcile with God, hopefully for if there's if there's victims for to ask for their forgiveness sometimes they never get that opportunity but nevertheless that's why I, i'm grateful that god says that i have good thoughts towards you every single day and new mercies for you every single day you know so even though sometimes we pay the cost in this life um god still forgives and i know that's hard to swallow sometimes because sometimes they're in there for something very light sometimes it's very heavy you know Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm going to write read the next one. This is his name is Eddie, out of North Carolina, and um, he says this. Some of these guys have chicken scratch writing, <laughs> so he says, uh, "Hi, brother David and sister Sharon. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. I pray that God is working for you and sister Sharon every day, whether prayer or preaching. I really enjoy." yours and Sister Sharon's podcast on Edovo. They make me rejoice in the Lord every time I see them. It's great to hear you and Sister Sharon to talk about the Lord Jesus Christ and you preach him and his words on all nine podcasts I have seen. And I really love the movie you made called Always With You. It is a movie never to forget. I wish there had been another part. <laughs> he wants a part two. <laughs> uh, when I turn my tablet on, I go to Edovo and press Discovery. And there's a little magnifying glass at the very top on the right hand of the tablet, and I press it, and a little computer comes on, and I put in House of Rest podcast, and it shows me all nine podcasts. I watch one or two at a time till my tablet goes dead, <laughs> and I pick up where I left off the next day. I enjoy all of them and start all over again looking at them. I praise God for you and your wife. Thank God we have pastors and wives to uh to care enough to be able to do podcasts for prisoners like us by showing that you do care for us when i first saw your podcast i couldn't stop watching them because they brought and meant so much in my life i'm looking for more to come on the dovo and discovery your daughter played a beautiful part in the movie always with you it brought a lot of tears to my eyes if you ever finished a book please send me a copy we have the, and then he shares his address and, um, you know, again, once again, I mean, it's like, oh, wait, he's not done. <laughs> wait. Um, oh no, he's just describing how to, how to send them some stuff. Okay. Yeah. But he'd put a PS. He says, uh, brother David and sister Sharon, keep me in your prayers. God bless you both. Keep up the great work for God. I really enjoy living for God. It's a wonderful life. And the road gets rocky at times, but I keep holding on. I'm 67 years old. You know, and, and it's like, I, I, I imagine because I know what it's like to be in a cell. I don't know what it's like to have a tablet. Um, but I imagine it's like drowning and somebody throwing you an oxygen, a lifeline, a lifeline you know. And, and here's what I always say is that. I don't know the percentage. I want to say in the 80s or even 90% of inmates are not lifers. Most of them have a release date. So you know what that means? The someday, all these thousands of inmates, every single day, every month, every year, are releasing to our cities, to our communities, to our neighborhoods, 
do you want them to come out better criminals? Or do you want them to come out saved and sanctified and washed in the blood of Jesus? So this this ministry of these tablets is, is very key and important. What verse did you give the young man today, Jeremiah? I gave uh, Jeremiah 33.3, the, the, the young man we visited today. Oh, I say young man, but well, he was about 12 years younger than me. So yeah, he's a young man. Yeah. Hmm? Oh. Okay, here's another one. This one, his name is Stephen from Gatesville, Texas. Okay, you guys ready? You ready, babe? Okay. He says, Hello, House of Rest fam. I hope this reaches you in God's light and blessings. Sister Sharon, here are some prayer requests from our unit. I will attempt to do this regularly. Pastor David, here's a list of the units, which where they are. I know it's confusing to say some from Dallas and the same unit elsewhere. This isn't the whole list, but it's the main units as well as the biggest ones. He's saying that because we were asking questions because in a lot of prisons now, you cannot send them physical letters. This is why they have the tablets because what people were spraying drugs on letters and people were using it to get high. So they quit all that. So now you, a lot of these states, you have to send a letter to a processing center and in the processing center, they scan it, and then they send it to the inmate's tablet. So that way they don't ever really get the letter. So anyways, I was asking questions on one of the podcasts, and that's why he's answering that. But anyways, he says this. Um, at the end, he says, uh, where's it at? He says, you were wondering why so many watched the Prodigal Son episode. Because remember, babe, I did the sermon on the Prodigal Son. And that one got like over 50,000 views. See, normally our sermons get between eleven to 18,000. But we noticed that this one on the prodigal son had over 50,000 views. So I asked on the podcast. I'm like, hey, if you know, hey, guys, let me know. Because I want to know what I did right on that one. Because a lot of people are watching it. And he says, you're wondering why so many watched the prodigal son episode. I went around here asking that question. <laughs> He says, the response was almost the same. First, you're one of us because they know that I'm an ex-con. He goes, you're not preaching at us, but you're preaching to us. He says, we all love and respect you for that. Lastly, we are all prodigal sons and daughters. You hit home hard when you fed us that sermon. Everybody feels they, you know, in the situation they're in and not only that, but there's women, you know, in women prisons, prodigal daughters. And he says, you, you fed us with that sermon. Thank you. Hopefully that answered your question. Praise report. The movie Kilroy you showed touched some of the guys in segregation here. Our good friend uh, Paul um, is a movie producer. He's a good brother in Christ. He um, produced a movie called Kilroy, which is a true story of somebody that came out of the Mexican mafia. And he Kilroy passed away, what, two years ago? But his dream... His dream was to have this movie shown in prisons, and it's happening now. Uh, it's almost almost at 400,000 views now. Yeah. So anyways, um, actually, if you want to watch Kilroy, uh, it's on Tubi. Uh, he just added it on Tubi. So anyways, um, the movie Kilroy you showed touched some of the guys in, in segregation here. You see, I'm part of the preventative intervention team, or PIT crew here, and seg is my building. Segregation is total isolation, the whole, solitary confinement. Guys that were a part of the same group, he was, want to make the same changes. Wow. One guy, he's been doing that life for 30 years. He will be getting baptized soon. Even gave his life at one of your altar calls. See, one, one thing we noticed when we got on Pando is a lot of these churches, they put a one hour, exact one hour um, video up. So they have to cut out their worship. They cut out their altar call. I mean, isn't that why we're preaching? Everything of a sermon builds up to that altar call, to that moment, to that call to Jesus. You know, so I remember telling Sharon, I don't know how I'm going to do it because Pando limits the amount of, of data you can upload. And I'm like, I'm going to figure this thing out because we have to include worship. We have to include the altar call. And we figured it out, you know. And look at that. Look at that. This person that was in the life of Kilroy gave his life to the Lord 
what did they say? Um, he, he even gave his life at one of your altar calls. I know y'all are busy, so I'll cut it short. Keep up the good work for the Lord. We will be praying for y'all, because you know, he's from Texas, uh, here in the Hughes unit, in his service, Brother Stephen. And then he gave a, a, a list of the different units and prisons. So that's an amazing letter too, you know? And guys, all the time, we get these all the time, you know? Um, well, this one, here's a short one, but uh, this is Jonathan from San Antonio, Texas. Okay, you guys ready? You ready? I'm ready. Ms. Sharon, hey, Mrs. <laughs> Ms. Sharon and David Rocha. Greetings, my name is Jonathan, but they call me uh, Lil Sambo here at the unit. I'm currently incarcerated in San Antonio, Texas. I've been watching you guys' podcasts and following y'all since episode one when you first came to the Pando app. I love your podcast. It gets me through the good times as well as the hard times. You guys are definitely angels from God. I just want you all to know that you're not only an inspiration, but also motivation to me. I've been incarcerated over a year, and because of you guys, I've given my life to Christ, and I'm bringing others to Christ as well. Wow. You guys are awesome, and I want you to know that you are definitely touching lives and mending broken hearts through your ministry. Keep doing what you're doing, because God's blessing you, God's blessing you guys, and you're blessing us here in the dorm, in our unit. I hope I know you are in California with your ministry, but if you ever come to Texas, be sure to come to San Antonio, Texas, and bless us with the service, or with the service or two, LOL. Thank you guys for everything you do, and God bless y'all. Oh, make sure you give the Dorm Dominguez unit a quick shout out, if you can, on your next live podcast. I'll have all the fellas tuned in. And then he says, please keep us in your prayers, and uh, please write back if you have time. God bless Jonathan. He got saved because of our videos. You know, again, to those that are watching that are monthly supporters, or even if you supported and gave one time to help us do this, I don't know. I'd have to find it. We'll do it on the next one. Um, this is making an impact. I mean, think about it. You know, a lot of times, you know, like, we, we pick up for, for missions. We pick up for, for Pastor Thomas, Pastor Moses. And God, God, praise God, because those dollars go a long way. But think about it. When you are help, helping support this prison ministry, you are affecting whether somebody is going to get saved or not. Like, this is a huge deal, you know? And that's why we're, we appreciate every single person um, that helps, that helps in... in you know, in, in giving and, and being a monthly supporter, even one time, like I said, it all helps, it all adds up, you know, and uh, and it helps us to continue on. So this is my last one that I wanted to write, read. And um, there's a reason because this one ends with the prayer for baby Mateo. Uh, this is one I haven't read to, to Amanda and, and uh, Anthony. As you guys know, uh, there's a young couple here uh, and their baby, uh, was diagnosed with a stage four cancer and uh, I forgot what it was exactly. I don't want to say it wrong, but he came very sick and uh, they didn't, he didn't believe in God, uh, nothing. They came, they got invited to church. The whole church prayed over that baby and man, God has been doing amazing things in that little boy's life and he's still going through struggles. He's still going through things, but God is good. And the whole family gave their life to the Lord and so many of we showed their picture one time of baby Mateo and so many letters of so many people just saying beautiful things to the baby Mateo. And you know what, 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 what messes me up is a couple of the inmates said, you know, I did wrong. I'm in here. I'm in prison. I did bad things. Uh, but baby Mateo doesn't, doesn't deserve what he's going through. I wish I could trade my life for his. They're, you know what they're saying? That they would take on his sickness so he could be healed. And of course, God doesn't work like that. You know, God doesn't do that. He says, okay, you know, but the gesture, you know, is is beautiful, you know. And anyways, 
This is the last letter. Uh, Dear Pastor David and Sister Sharon, uh, my spirit has been in dire straits since our Sunday service with Brother Armando. You know, because Armando, uh, that's when I was sick. You know, and you just got back from Utah and we stayed home. I, I don't miss Sunday service unless I'm bedridden and I was really sick. But Armando is um, our leader for our Spanish services, but he's bilingual. So I had him preach on that Sunday. And on that Sunday, that's when they showed the pictures of, of, of baby Mateo. Uh, he says, <clears throat> uh, with Brother Armando, we prayed for baby Mateo. I hope the spelling is right. Today's August 1st, and I've been in fasting and prayer since Sunday when I heard what the doctor said. He fasted for the baby. He says, a little background. I was in the Christian pod in 1998 in the Tarrant County Jail, not yet surrendering my life because I was faking and shaking. But a lay minister talked to me every day, and I said, you need to miss me with all that Jesus stuff. But still he tried, and finally one day a man came in the pod blowing a horn of some type, shofar, and the spirit came, up, came upon me, and I fell to my knee, knees, tears running like a waterfall. And I surrendered my life. A blow of a shofar. Wow. There's people on Sunday that they said, man, when you walk by me, they said just something trembled in them. Um, he was, I was not eating much then and was called to medical to get weighed. And there was an old black man sitting there. His breathing was labored. And God said, go and pray for him. Lay your hands on him and pray. And I said, I ain't going to do that. <laughs> I ain't going to do it all of a sudden. It was like I had to, no control of my being, and I found myself walking up to this man. And I said, what's wrong, sir? Through his broken breathing, he said, too many years smoking, my lungs are bad. And I said, do you believe Jesus can heal you? And he said, yes. And I laid my hand on his chest, the other on his head, and began to pray after a time, and began to pray. After a time, he looked at me and said, what did you do to me? I said, I prayed for you. He says, no, you healed me. See, my breathing's better. And I said, no, you're healed because you believed. This has happened many times since, over my 25 years locked up. Oh. In some form or fashion, I also pray and speak in tongues over these sick people. Y'all, I'm a nobody, but I know he uses me. And I'm the one who wrote you last week about doing the AC work at our ECB. Anyway, I cried and prayed and begged God to heal baby Mateo. That is, if it's his will to heal this baby, he may even need this baby with him or whatever he was, but I have to stand in the gap. There's a reason that I've been locked up an innocent man all these years, perhaps for such a time as this, because I would never have met this church family. Otherwise, if it's God's will to heal baby Mateo, then I believe he has sent me to pray this will for the first long distance healing for me. So he prays for people, and people get healed, but this is the first time long distance healing. He says, my spirit will not let me rest. I don't know where the cancer is, so y'all have to help me on a separate sheet of paper, but I will pray, David, you and Sharon have to be my hands. He says, lay your hands upon this baby and have someone else read my prayer. We have to believe for Mateo that this baby receives a healing. There was two pictures I'm thinking, is the mama and daddy during this service holding this baby and I've laid hands on my tablet and prayed over this baby <laughs> Sharon I've also prayed for your sister I have prayed emotional healing as well as a peace that passes all understanding her heavenly father is holding her in his arms he will never leave her nor forsake her I pray Philippians 4 7 over her right now in the name of Jesus brother David sister Sharon I have a grown I have grown to love the two of you very much, and I love everyone at House of Rest Church. I never knew true love until Jesus, as I was a pretty rough person. But Jesus broke me to the core when I pray. I weep when I speak the word. I weep because so many play the part, and they make a showing at church on Sunday, but let Satan bind them the rest of the week. I may not be all that God wants me to be, but thank Jesus I'm not where I used to be. If I'm called to this church family, I'm going to just talk that talk. I'm not, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to just talk that talk. I'm going to walk that walk. I took off work today to write all this. Believe me, it's about 104 in this dorm right now. I have no ulterior motives other than to see Satan lose just as he has from the beginning. 
I will close here for now. God bless you, and I'll keep you safe and well. And then he has the prayer. And this is the prayer that he has. And we are again, when we see uh, baby Mattel, we're going to pray this over him. Because, you know, th this isn't the only one. You know, but we're, every one, every one, every, we're going to hit the devil. Right, we're right in his fat face. Okay, so it's called, it's titled Healing. And this is a prayer for Mateo. Father God, we stand in the gap for baby Mateo. I come before you asking for divine healing touch. Father, I bind this disease of cancer. Satan, I bind you from operating in baby Mateo's life. You're a liar and the truth is not in you. You have come to steal, kill, and destroy. But God says he has come to give life. You have no win over this baby's life, and you have no dominion. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. God says whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I bind this cancer from operating in this family's life. I loose the ministering angels to encamp around this baby as God pours forth his healing from the tip of this baby's head to the soles of this baby's feet. I call down healing. Touch this baby, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Show up and show out. God, I ask for a divine miracle. Dissolve this cancer and anything that would come before this baby or this family in the name above all names and real big Jesus. <laughs> Amen. That's Brother John. And uh, he is, what did I say he was? This is uh, Iowa Park, Texas, in Texas. So these are just some of the letters, guys. I, I Every week, you know, we're going to just kind of sit here and, and share some of them with you. And um, hopefully this blesses you. If you, like I said, if you are a supporter of this ministry, this is for you. You know, and um, if, if somebody's watching this and you want to be a part so everybody that is a supporter, I want to share this. Every person that is a monthly supporter or even gives once, uh, I send a weekly uh, email to you uh, along with um, a screenshot of how many views where we're at. So everybody's in the know-how uh, that's given even once. You're going to get all those statistics. You're going to know what is happening, what's going on, any praise reports and anything like that. And um, I feel like because I think that's important because if you're a monthly supporter, you're going to get a weekly email just knowing an update of what's going on and, and things like that, you know, and that way, you know, because I want you to know where your money is being sown into and what you're reaping from it, because it's not us. It's us as a team together, us as a unit, because we can make this happen, you know, and um, it's not even three months, 4,000 salvations. You know, and here's the thing. I'm, I'm praying in the future because Pando um, only allows us eight videos because there's different tiers, uh, but each one costs more. But we have the lowest one that allows us eight videos a month, which allows us four sermons and four podcasts. But we pray in the future that this ministry grow, that we were, that we go someday we can go to the next tier and put more videos because they're they're not we could do our Bible studies. We could do our Spanish services. There's so much more that we can do, you know, but for now I'm, I'm grateful. I'm right now because even the eight videos, look what it's doing yeah. over 4,000 salvations with eight videos a month. So we're, we're going to pray for this continue to, to grow. And I pray for God to bless every person that has even given a dollar toward this ministry. And um, if that's something you want to be included in, please write in the comments, email us at houseofrestchurch at gmail.com. Let us know and, um, and grow with us and be a part of this team. We will add you to the weekly email and, uh, and you'll be updated uh, because it's important for you to know where your funds are going and, and what it's causing to happen because there is a revival happening in prisons. So God bless you. Thank you so much. Anything, Sharon, your baby, you want to say? No? Uh, let's, let's say bye to them. All right. God bless.